Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a, another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. I can't stop doing these. Gotta find more time to do with myself. However, I figured with Rage of the Abyss Rota on the horizon, I figured I'd do another video just to go over like what are the main stuff to look out for and all that coming out. So, obviously, the big bad himself uh, right here, Mochami Fubalas. The second card for this archetype per se and all that. And this is the big bad of the entire set. Everyone has been fearing for this card. And if you can read the effect on screen, you can see why. If you control no cards, quick effect, discard this card. And you apply both of these effects for the rest of this turn. Each time your opponent special summons a monster from the deck or extra deck, you immediately draw one card. And then once during this end phase, if the number of cards in your hand is more than the number of cards your opponent controls plus six, you must randomly shuffle cards from your hand into the deck so the number of, uh, in your hand equals to the number of uh, uh, your opponent controls plus six. And you can only activate one other Mulchami monster effect the turn you activate this effect. And so people have put the stagnant fear of oh, chain mold chummy four loss cha one and then you chain Perulia chain link two and all that and so theoretically basically this is just maxi and all that right and yeah it's gonna be real bad er, er, this is the one that everyone's going to main deck and you can see why deck or extra deck whoo with how combo decks are going by nowadays, people are going through at least seven, eight cards from their extra deck, right? And of course, with like something like, say, Snake Eyes and all that, right? They're summoning at least three or four from their deck and all that, right? So, in theory, this card draws you a lot. However, if your opponent is like, nah, I'm not going to do that, right? Just passes their turn. Guess what? You're not guess what you're now minus one or two if you activate Perulia and all that right But as you can see This is the card that everyone wants you I know that you can see this price right here First and foremost guy don't pay for this price don't pay pre-sale prices All right, I have seen people bought a hundred and ten dollar copies of bonfire when that was at pre-release Ooh, and that's like twenty dollars right now Ooh horrible horrible remember people this is a hobby not a financial investment do not do not buy this at this price just wait for it to go down to like i don't know 50 60 that's more reasonable right but yeah this is going to be this set is going to change a lot of stuff in Yu-Gi-Oh and all that the entire meta ship is now going to roll off around this bad boy and all that can't wait but if you feel priced out, remember they are there are online simulators and things like Dueling Book and Master Duel and all that. So if you still want to get that kick, but you but you don't want to pay the price, you have those to go to and all that. I'm not going to shame you if you do get feel if you do leave if you get priced out. I am not that person to judge. And all that. So next up, uh, Dominus Impulse is the next big one, and. It reads crazy, it's a normal trap, and you can activate this card from your hand if your opponent controls a card. Amazing art, by the way. I really like this art. Um, but it does read, when this when a card effect is activated, that includes an effect that special summons a monster. I say they activate something like Fusion Destiny, right? Uh, negate that effect. Then if you have a trap in your graveyard, destroy that card. And if you activated this card from your hand, you cannot activate light effect uh, effects of light, earth, and wind monsters for the rest of this duel. And all of that, right? If your deck is all water, hey, there you go. Don't have to worry about that, Dan. And all this, this, this card will make a splash and all that, right? Uh, this is pro everyone seeing this as a three of because the most prominent hand trap, right? Ash is a fire, so you can still activate that. Um, this does shut off four offs, which is you know if you don't don't if you didn't draw, it, it's fine, right? Uh, you still got Perulia. This, this deck is great. This is fantastic, right? You know, this stops something like, say, a Promethean Princess from Grave or a uh, 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 OSS and all that. Still, fantastic card. Um, this is obviously the other big hit, but I do think we got to be out to watch out for this. This also messes with a uh, <clears throat> certain deck and all that that I'll get to in a moment, but we'll get there when we get there. Next up, 
Fire King players rejoice. We finally got Fire King Courtier Okanix. And funnily enough, this card has been in Macedon since March and all that, I believe. Really funny. This is this was really funny. And all that. No, I lied. I lied. Not March. June. This card has been in Master Duel since June. <laughs> it, this this is the funny one right here. But card does read crazy. Uh, you can see the Sanctuary in the background. And if this card's normal special summon, to show one other fire monster from your hand or field. And if you do, add a fire beast, beast warrior, or winged beast from your deck to your hand, except yourself. Then you can make this card level become the added monsters. So. Destroy Aponix, get yourself Garunix, and, and then uh, Alcanix becomes a level 8. Garunix will then trigger, summon itself, destroy Borong, whatever, and all that, right? And all that. Then right here, you can make rank 8 much easier now. And it's even more easier because if Alcanix is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you summon a high... Fire King High Avatar Garunix from your deck in defense. This helps you with rank 8 plays because with Sanctuary on field, your opponent special summons a monster at any point. You can make Garunix the Avatar of High King Deity. That big XZs. Nuke the whole field and all that, right? And then you can kill him on the crackback. Excellent card. This is fantastic. Problem? It's a secret rare. <laughs> and I've seen 3 of which sucks, but... It's still a fantastic card for the Fire King players. Rejoice, we f you guys finally got Okanix. Next up, we got Heart of the Blue Eyes. Uh, for the Millennium stuff, it's always treated as one. It has quite the effect and all that. The last effect, but first, of got yeah, run through it real quick. Cannot control this card, cannot switch. You can discard this card, add Millennium Ankh from your deck to your hand. The one of the most integral cards for the uh, Millennium pile. Uh, you can only use this effect once per turn. And this right here, this card's in your graveyard. You activate Millennium Ankh this duel, and your opponent no more special summons a monster that's level 8 or higher, or has 3,000 or more attack. Send that monster to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon this card, and you can only use it this effect once per duel. So, if you don't know, it while it is Blue Eyes by name, it is not a Blue Eyes card. This is a reference to Solomon Moot or Grandpa Mutos from the anime. This is his Blue Eyes and all that, right? Which is a reference why control of this card cannot switch because Solomon Mutu did not want to give away this Blue Eyes to Seto Kaiba as Seto Kaiba want to get rid of all the Blue Eyes in the world and all that, right? While having, well, because he only has the alt three, right? This is a reference to that, and I believe this here is a reference to uh, your opponent's normal special summons a monster and his level 8 or higher has 3,000 more attack. Send it to the graveyard special summon this card. I think this is a reference to when uh, either in the manga where Yugi activates Monster Reborn to summon this back, you know, crash into another one. Something like that. I, I don't know. My reason's a little fuzzy on that, but card's fantastic right this is basically Ankh 3 uh, 4 5 and 6 for the deck fantastic one problem it's also secrets <laughs> oh boy rarity distributions right hope that's the set list next up memento gang we got another another memento and this is ugly dude Yeesh. but uh excellent card though uh this card is normal special summon. Activate this effect. Your level 9 or higher memento monsters can direct, uh, attack directly. So, Creation King and Combined Creation, uh, both level 9 and 11, respectively, <clears throat> uh, can attack directly. Once Creation King is 3k and Combined Creation is 5k. That is 8,000 points of damage and all that. So, Memento has even easier ways to OTK and all that now. And, of course... If this card is destroyed by card effect, it's target one other one of your other memento cards that is banished or in your graveyard, add it to your hand. And if a memento monster in your hand or face of field is destroyed by battle card effect, well, this is in your graveyard. Special summon this card and all that. Excellent. This card's all excellent. Not a three of per se, but it, and all that, it's a good one of and all that. Helps get your stuff back, right? And helps with the OTK and all that as well. Excellent card. The Fiendsmiths players, oh, oh, we don't, we, I gotta censor this, uh, and all that. 
but uh, Lacrim of the Crimson Tears is always treated as a Fiendsmith card. Is a normal special summon, send a Fiendsmith card from your deck to the graveyard except Lacrima. And then during your opponent's turn, if this card's in your graveyard, quick effect, target one Fiendsmith Link monster in your graveyard, shuffle this into the deck, and special summon that monster. And you can only use each effect once per turn. Uh, Lacrima helps as a 1 over 2 of in certain decks and all that, probably Fiendsmith Ubel. Uh, this is just another way to dump a second engraver and all that. So that way, when you do the Fiendsmith line, uh, you can make Aerial Eater, Neck Equip, right, much more easier now, right, or you're getting a Disarray. This is um, helps make Frontier for a Disarray because it is a Light Fiend. And of course, this also being a normal summon is pretty good because if you didn't open Engraver, right, you can always normal summon Lacrima, dump Engraver, make it off of Requiem, get another Engraver, and do the whole Shaban from there. Excellent card. And all that, but also another secret rare. Woo! Next up, we got the shark stuff. New sharks. Everyone, if you had to choose between the sharks or the meta, which would you choose? I'm choosing the sharks. So, <clears throat> my favorite thing about this right here, if this card is added to your hand except by drawing it, special summon this card. It's Shark Poplar. Besides that, though, this is the, believe to my knowledge, the first monster that has this effect right here. This card can be treated as two materials for an XC7 of a water XC monster that requires three or more materials. Three more, uh, three or more materials. This is a reference to Shark, Shark Dr number 32, Shark Drake, because he needs three level fours. Uh, and the cover card, um, Shark Drake Levice, who. Uh, who needs level? F no, sorry, Shark Drake Vice, which needs uh, a lot more level fours. I think four level fours for Shark Drake Vice, right? And then the other C32 that you rank up on top of them, which needs four level five uh, monsters and all that. So, Shark Drake, the Shark Drake Vice, into the Shark Drake Levice and all that, right? But him being counting as two on its own. Fantastic, because you just need another level 4, and you're good to go. And of course, any Shark Drake exceeds that has this card as a material gains its effect, where once per turn, detach 2, then target a spell trap in the field, attach it to his material, excellent removal and all that in my opinion. Great card. Shark stuff is fantastic. I think this deck is going to be a little bit better than it is in the OCG and all that, but we do, do not have the Light Pack Dragon stuff, which kind of sucks, but I... <sighs> I still think the deck is fine. We here, we do have three totally awesome, while the OCG doesn't. So, I do think this deck will be will perform a lot better here. So, remember that deck? Remember that uh, Dominus Simple thing I mentioned? Well, all the Mimi Ghouls are Earth Monsters and all that, right? So, if you don't know, the Mimi Ghoul stuff are level 1 monsters. That have various slip effects. Let's go to Cerberus, for example, where if it's the main phase, you apply these effects in sequence, banish the top three of your deck, then summon one of your banished monsters to your opponent's field of defense, and then you give this card a control. This is a activated effect that happens on your opponent's field that applies in sequence. So Cerberus banishes three, then someone say like a banished uh Ash Blossom, right? And then Cerberus goes right back to your field. Your opponent is activating this flip effect and all that so at any point they activate dominus impulse all your mimic ghouls are dead on the spot i will just say that but besides that we got some good new mimic ghoul support Mim giant and throne well the giant being a secret and the throne being uh, ultra still fantastic cards and all that throne being in two level ones where all all the non exes ones can attack directly while your opponent controls a face down, of course. And then, uh, if this exes summon, add a card, uh, and a mimical card from your deck to your hand. You can attach a material from this card, talk your face across in the field up to the number of face on monster your opponent controls and destroy them. Excellent. And time win con, because they do a thousand for each card destroyed. Fantastic. And of course, what's the master without his throne, right? Attaching material from this card, you summon Mimigo Master. Here's what he does, by the way, if you want to pause. And 
during the main phase quick effect target a master you control <clears throat> it's the one that you summon off of this effect give you equip the uh you make master sit on the stone that gives it a thousand attack and then you can re non-targeting removal up to the amount of materials this card has probably just the one if you did uh if you didn't open a master but other than that the mimical stuff is fantastic Save for charming maybe armor but other than that excellent job konami you get one clap now besides that stuff we got six sam support so i do think six sam is in with contention along with infernity as decks that are all gas as in they will go crazy and use everything at their disposal to make the definition of break my board you can't Shein, new Shein, right same materials as the old one and if it's sick or summon you add a six sand monster or a Shein effect monster from your deck of graveyard to your hand excellent uh, extender and all that right gateway to the six is at one and probably should stay at one please understand i do not want to see three gateway but new Shein is a level six compared to level five and he covers monster effects because old Shein covers spell on traps and does have the same protection effect as well. The new six same stuff is great. It's fantastic and all that, right? However, dear God, am I, if I have to sit through an entire six same combo, I'm just looking at my opponent without drawing a Nibiru, man. Mm, I would hate that. Still, fantastic support. Uh, we have the Metamorph stuff. Uh, here it's used as more of like an engine, I believe. Uh, the cards revolve around the new metal morph, or of course the OG stuff, right? Where you would tribute a face up monster and special summon one that cannot be normal summon set and mentions max metal morph from deck hand deck or graveyard. Then you can equip this card to it with the following effects 400 attack and defense. Cannot be destroyed by spell or monster effects, and they cannot be targeted with monster or spell cards or effects, right? Only can act in one per turn. And the big boy that you bring out is Red Eyes Black Full Metal Dragon. <clears throat> with equipped with the Dragon Claws and all that. But of course, Red Eyes Black Full Metal Dragon cannot be normal summoner set. He has to be special, must first be special summoned with maximum morph that was activated by triggering a level 5 higher dragon. Um, you can reveal this card, set one Metal Morph Trap from your deck, and if you do, shuffle this card into the deck, and when your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, negate the activation, then inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack position, uh, one attack position monster of original attack, right? And you can only use each effect once per turn. Now, you're supposed to... Oh, sorry. Uh, now, you are supposed to get Metal Illusionist off of on all that. As a way to tr as the tribute father here right increase this cards level by four during your opponent's turn only so this goes from one to level five and uh, if this card is almost special summon set a metal morph trap from your deck and then if maximum morph is in your graveyard draw a card <sighs> I just want to let you know this can be ashed because this is all part of one effect and all that right so don't have the maximum morph in your graveyard Please don't. <laughs> and of course, declare uh, one other monster type. This card becomes that type until you end your opponent's turn. With the new maximum morph shenanigans, right? You can draw call dragon or fiend. Just call dragon. <laughs> the fiend one doesn't matter. Just call dragon. Um, in terms for the impact and all that, I think this stuff will be played. Not as much as like the adventure engine, but I, I do think seeing this as being played and all that. Uh, red as black full metal dragon. He's thirty four hundred attack, right? And he burns. That's a time win con. He's negation. He's good. Like this is great. Red eyes support. That's actually good. That's also technically not red eyes support, <laughs> but it's good. Uh, this stuff is good. Uh, next, of course, we got Shark Drake Levice here. This is the cover card. Bad boy got released as a super. Well, from the looks of it. With all the reveals and all that, he is most likely a super and all that. So, which is weird, but they did him dirty. Um, he does need four level five monsters, and he is a Chaos Exceeds Evolution card where you can Exceed some of this card by discarding a spell. 
and all that. And using a uh, rank 4 shark trick exceeds monster you control's material and you transfer his materials to this card. Once per turn, quick effect, detach material, then target one effect monster your opponent controls, negate its effects, and its attack and defense become zero. This is permanent, by the way. Um, this card can make two attacks during each battle phase, and if it attacks the defense position monster, piercing battle damage. Fantastic. Now, you need to discard one spell. And what spell do you need for that? Uh, Rank up magic or reincarnation unveiling mail or rum. It's also in like the logo for the rank up magic stuff. So, cool thing about it, always treat it as an Omnic Z card. So, the Omnic Z stuff can just slide right in with the new shark stuff. An Xyz monster equipped with this card gains the effect, it cannot be destroyed by battle, and once per turn, if this card battle is turned, you can return one card equipped to this card to the hand and immediately effect. Immediately after this effect resolves, exceeds summon one water, exceeds monster, and all. So you return this card, right? And then immediately rank up one of your shark tricks and all that, right? So, for example, for example, right? Uh, let's go. We got shark trick vice, right? Uh, you could just rank up. You could just rank him up into shark trick Levice, right? By discarding uh, the rum. And then, of course, during the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent this turn, equip it to one of these monster you control. Uh, you can equip it to uh, equip it to that uh, shark trick device. And of course, you can don't always have to go into device. Uh, you can also go into the armored disease stuff. You know, um, let's see here. You can always go into dark uh, dark knight lancer. He's huge. You can just use one rank five or rank six monster you control. He uh, gains three inch attack for each material and equip card it has. And of course, recovers your full uh, armor exceeds cards and is removal. So, you don't want to go into Levice? Well, you got full armor Dark Knight Lancer as backup. Uh, and I do think the Shark Sets is going to make a splash because we got three Toad, you know? Three Toad's pretty good. You know what else will make a splash though? New Atlantean support, Poseidra, Bis, the Atlantean Dragon Lord. Mmm, good name. Wow, got banger names in this set. Isn't that crazy? Uh, three uh, level sevens, or once per turn, you can see summon Poseidra, now using one Atlantean or Mermel Xyz you control, attach the materials to it, and once per turn, detach two materials, and send one wall monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard, return up to three cards your opponent controls to the hand Whew. now I'm talking removal and three we love it and guess what's another three <laughs> you can some if this card see summon card is sent to the graveyard discard a card to the graveyard special summon three level three lower fish sea serpent and or awkward from your hand to graveyard now this part right here in case Poseidra gets uh, sent in case Poseidon uh, leaves the field, we get to go into the Mermel King Neptibus, the new Mermel's uh, Link 3. You need two monsters, which includes a fish, sea serpent, and an aqua monster. Your opponent cannot target monsters, water monsters that this card points to with card effects. And you can only use each of the following effects once per turn. Uh, if a water monster sends the graveyard to activate a card or effect, except the damage step, take an abyss equip spell from your deck to your graveyard, you need to add it to your hand or equip to this card. And if this card is owner's possession, it's destroyed by a card, add a Atlantean or Mermel from your deck to your hand. Whoo! Got a lot to talk about. First, well, not a whole lot because I can't really think or can't talk too much, but the abyss equip spell uh, right here. You got Abyss Scale Mizuchi or Kraken. You have a uh, spell effect or a monster effect, respectively, that negates on resolution. This is... F <laughs> and they're not once per turn. So, if at any point you go through, say, um, your opponent activates an Ash while you already have a Kraken, uh, that Kraken goes to the graveyard because it gets on that resolution, right? And then... You summon Neptibus, and guess what? Get a second in one and all that, right? Not in the Ash, I mean, sorry, on the field. So, say they activate a, I don't know, a Snake Eyes Ash. There you go. Right? So, get a second one, you know. Get a second to gate. 
Or we're gonna so this will negate Super Poly, by the way, which is very funny because none of these start a chain. It's very funny. Uh, <laughs> but the Mermo stuff, I it's fantastic. They're good. I like it. Uh, next up, we got the Primites or the Primordials, I believe what they're what they're called in the OCG. Um, mm, Lordy Load at the Primite card from your deck your hand, except itself. You declare a normal monster card name, so say, I don't know, Skull Servant, right? You special someone declared a uh, monster from your hand deck or graveyard, and then you cannot activate the effects of special summon monsters on the field this turn. And normal monsters and primite monsters, you control gain 300 attack for each normal monsters with different names in your graveyard. This is normal monster support. I see it as magic key support. Or in Sushi supports. Please, Konami, give me more supports for them. Other than that, the Primite stuff looks pretty good. Uh, the big boy, uh, Imperial Dragon, cannot be normal summoned except by tributing one normal monster, but can be normal su normal set. And during your opponent's main phase, quick effect, reveal this card in your hand. Immediately effect. after this effect resolves, normal summon one Primite monster, probably Imperial Dragon. And then if it's tribute summon, apply these effects in sequence. Negate the effects of all face of monsters your opponent currently controls. And banish all monsters your opponent controls with the same type or attribute as a normal monster in your graveyard. So, if you are playing a normal monster brew deck, like say Magic Key or Sue Ships. Sue Ships gets fire, Magic Key gets dark, and maybe like light. Other than that, this is a really good card. I don't know how much of an impact it will have, but I do think I'll see some decks playing it, though. I like it. Uh, next up, every the lore. Yeah, the Sinful Spoils stuff. Deception of the Sinful Spoils has been confirmed a secret, so it's going to be rough. So, the Sinful Spoils, the Azamina stuff and all that, right? Uh is being played as a negate for the snake eye beef brew pile stuff but i'm getting real tired of it honestly just and the lore how you can make a banger lore now best than like a middling one with the uh vsauce star frost uh stuff right and then you got the sinful spoil stuff which is just like oh right however the section of sinful spoils kind of reads crazy. You tribute a monster from your hand or field, add an Azamita card from your deck to your hand. And if a monster is sent to your opponent's graveyard and you control an Azamita monster, except during a damage step, you can make your opponent lose 1500 and you gain 1500. And then during the end phase, if this card's in the graveyard because it was sent there from the spell and trap zone, this turn while face up, you can set it and you can only use each effect once per turn. Now, the Azamita card you are most likely searching is the Hollowed Azamita. So, you reveal an Azamina Fusion from your extra deck, which is usually get uh, Ilya Sylvia. I'll get to you in a second. Uh, even for every four levels it has, round it down, send a Sinful Spoils card from your hand and or field to the graveyard. If face down, reveal it. Then, special summon that revealed monster. It's treated as a fusion summon. The card's in your graveyard. Target an Azamina monster control in your graveyard. Shuffle it into the deck. And if you do, add this card in your hand. So, this is a extensive resource loop right here because what you do, you tribute a monster, get it, get Hollowed Azamina. How activate Hollowed Azamina? Send Deception. From there, you summon Azamina Ilya Sylvia. And then from there, if you at any point you activate Ilya Sylvia's effect, which is a negate, right? Right? You activate the Hollowed Azamina, target. Ilya Sylvia, you put it back into the deck, add this card in your hand, right? And then Deception sets itself back up. So this is... And so this is life again. And guess what? This fusion effect right here is not once per turn. It's the graveyard effect that's once per turn, which is insane. This is the stuff everyone's everyone's going to be going after, right? Because you run maybe one, two, two of these, one of these, and then one of this in the extra. And it's just like, oh, it's great. And of course, at any point, if Azamina Ilya is summoned, right, uh, any battle damage your Azamina monsters control, uh, inflict to your opponent is doubled, excluding her. I assume it's a her, but um, 
I don't know what I'm looking at. I see two dogs, I think. Um, and when your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, tribute this card, negate that effect. And if this card is destroyed by battle card effect, you add a sinful spoils trap from your deck to your hand. Um, I think the sinful spoils trap you usually get would be... Let me look this up. Uh, it is... You can see how well planned I thought of this. Um... Ah, oh, jeez. Is it struggle? No, no, that's a spell. That's Don't ignore that. Is it subdual? No, not subdual. It's one of these. It's one of these. No. Is it? Is it this one? Nope. <laughs> nope. Whichever. It's this one. <laughs> Is it not this one? Nope, never mind. I thought it was this one, but I think this is a reference that you get um, this, because it's Silvera and all that. But I, I don't care. Everyone cares about this right here. And guess what? And guess what? If at any point this leaves the field, you activate this. And then activate that. And guess what? You got a small resource loop of a uh, Omni Negate. Ain't that fun. So what I think about this set. 8 out of 10. I don't like the Azamita stuff. But everyone's going to play it. And I'm going to have a big headache. Everything else though is fantastic. The Mimigo stuff. Great. Uh, shark stuff and all that. Fantastic. You suck. You're good. Thank <laughs> Everyone's rejoicing. The Five pure Fire King players are rejoicing that you're here now. Uh, shout out, got his, you know, Dark Magician got a sell, right? Hey, there you go. Other than that, the, this set, 8 out of 10. I like it. I like it. But God, please, I beg of you, do not spend $184.99 for one copy of Fuwalas. Please, don't do that. Other than that, though, I hope you guys have a rest, good rest of your day. See you guys then.